In the first days of the world, the earth was covered with water. There was no light in the sky, neither sun at day, nor stars or moon at night. Under the surface lived the water animals, loon, kingfisher, otter, muskrat. They all lived in darkness. In the sky, the great spirit sat beneath the branches of a glowing apple tree with roots that sank into the clouds. One day, the great spirit called to his daughter, the Sky Woman. He pulled up the tree so she could look down to the earth. How can they live in such darkness and chaos? asked the Sky Woman. The great spirit replied, If you desire, you can bring them light and order. The great spirit gathered up the Sky Woman in his hands and gently lowered her down. When he let go, she began to fall slowly towards the earth. The water animals lifted their heads and looked up in wonder at the glowing woman in the sky. What will happen when she reaches the water? They asked one another. All the animals dove as deep as they could to find land. None could hold their breath long enough until finally Muskrat brought up a little bit of earth in his paws. A great turtle arrived and Muskrat put the earth on his back. The turtle grew and the earth multiplied until they became a great island which men now call North America. From beneath the water, the swans flew up to meet the Sky Woman. They caught her and carefully set her down upon the new land. The Sky Woman thanked the animals. Now I can give this land spirit, she said. She then gave birth to twin sons. The son who was born first was born laughing and was called the Good Spirit. The son who was born second caused the Sky Woman so much pain that she died. He was called the Evil Spirit. The Good Spirit grieved for his mother, but he took her eyes and raised them into the sky so one could become the sun and the other the moon her tears became the stars this way the world would no longer be in darkness the good spirit buried what was left of his mother under the earth to nourish the soil all the trees and plants would grow out of her meanwhile while the good spirit worked in the light, the evil spirit did mischief within the shadows. The evil spirit crossed the land, moving from shadow to shadow. I will ruin everything my brother has made, he said. And so, when the good spirit made strong trees and swift deer, the evil spirit made poisonous berries and stinging insects. Finally, the good spirit took red clay from the earth and made humans. He taught humans how to speak and live together. The jealous evil spirit made himself servants out of sea foam. The good spirit saw that his creations heeded his words and were capable of wisdom. He wished that they might live forever in harmony. The good spirit saw the mischief that his brother did and knew that even his help would not be enough. He told his brother to stop making trouble, but the evil spirit refused. Knowing that his brother would respect only violence, the good spirit reluctantly challenged the evil spirit to combat. The winner would rule the world. The good spirit and his people united and triumphed over the evil spirit. He
banished his brother to a cave beneath the earth. On the surface, though, some of the evil spirit servants still wandered from shadow to shadow. Their influence causes men to do evil things. This is why there is still evil in the world. But people can also cast out this evil and find the good spirit within. All people can choose the path they follow. If I said that was the craziest shit I'd ever seen, would that be the most obvious statement ever? Trey has been through a severely traumatic experience. Okay. Second most obvious statement ever. Continue exploring his memories. The best is yet to come. Good to see you're feeling better. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Finnegan, was it? Sweet Mother Mary. Have we taken in the village idiot? Barry! Remember, Shay, I'm Cassidy, and this is... Barry! <laughs> You've been ill for weeks. I hate to have been a burden. See? He's a civilized fella. Aye, for a clumsy deckhand. Probably fell off his ship half drunk. Barry! He's right. What do y'all want? <gasps> What's going on? About. Stay out of this, you fool! Well, I was going to, but... Now you've made things personal. And don't come back! Thank you, Shay. In my younger days, I could have taken them one-handed. Why were these men bothering you? Ah, oh, the usual. They feel they're owed money because they're not harming citizens. Mark me words, those gangs are going to be the downfall of this city. Wait here, I have something for you. It won't do you any good walking around Starkers. Here, try these on. They were our sons. I suppose if you're looking for trouble, you'll be needing these. Thank you.
Don't you look a right, gentleman? Gas. Did I have a book with me? Mm, just those peculiar weapons. Thank you both. If you'll excuse me. The manuscript is at the bottom of the Atlantic. your friends got against the Finnegans? Uh, I got no gripe. Uh, my boss sent me over. Ah. And where is he set up? Y you can't miss it. There's always black smoke rising from the courtyard of that building. will help us smoke. Be at ease, Master Cormac. We are friends. The Finnegans were worried you might take matters into your own hands. I am Colonel George Monroe. Colonel? I came to help, but I see I am late. Thank you for dealing with these foul criminals. They were a blight on New York. What do you care? You redcoats are nothing but landlords. The townsfolk here are grinding away, trying to make a living. I cannot blame you for having that impression. Some of my comrades have been less than helpful. But I take a different approach. And what is that? I care. I want to see these colonists safe and prosperous. Noble words. Perhaps actions will convince you otherwise, Master Cormac. Here. 
Reclaim what they have stolen. Now let us use some of that money for the good of the city. I realize you have no reason to trust me, Master Cormac. You said you were a friend of the Finnegans. I am. Their late son worked for me. You are much like him. How so? He cared. And he wanted to do good by the people. We shared a dream, he and I. That of making the world a better place. Mere survival is not enough. Full bellies, warm clothing. Freedom from want is the greatest freedom of all. It almost sounds like you have goodwill towards the people you govern. I do not govern, Master Cormac. I merely assist. See this neglected edifice, Master Cormac? We can make it better. Urban renewal is a new science, but one that has already proven effective on the continent. I have arranged for resources. Use them to improve that building. I suspect New York will prosper under your watch, Master Cormac. You can do great things for this city and its citizens. After all, a man needs purpose. Farewell for now.